so you can see how it's snapping to a grid. So this is extremely useful if you are creating something where you need an element to snap to a particular area on a page. So if you're creating a web application uh, that requires this, it's an extremely effective uh, way of actually you know, snapping to particular areas on a grid. So that's uh, another option there. Uh, let's just pull this down and refresh. Uh, I'm going to remove this grid option now and we're going to go on to look at revert. Now revert is not really something you would include with your um, dragging. It would only be something you'd want if you can, um, if you wanted the the element itself to revert back to a particular position. So revert we can set to true. And what this will do is wherever the element has started, um, oh, sorry, uh, let's just get rid of that there. Sorry. Uh, okay, so wherever the element has started, I'm continuing to drag it. However, when I release it, you can see it, it returns to its original position. So wherever I drag it to, it snaps and reverts back to its original position. Uh, and we also have an additional uh, parameter that we can set for this, and this is revert duration. And we can set a time in milliseconds uh, how long this takes to revert back to its original position. So I've set revert duration. Now if I drag, you can see it takes, uh, a, that was a second to revert back. Uh, if I was to say, change this to five uh, seconds, you can see that uh, it's significantly slower. It takes five seconds to revert back to its original position. So that's the revert option and then the revert duration option that allows you to set the speed. However, I tend to find that the revert set to true by its default speed uh, is a nice speed for it to revert back to. I think it's probably uh, 500 uh, milliseconds by default. Okay, so now that we've looked at a few options in here, we're gonna take a look at events. Now events can be uh, appended as normal onto the end of, sorry, onto the end of here uh, and then we create a function inside of these to perform a specific action. So for example, I want to, um, I'm going to comma separate the last option that I've chosen um, and I'm then going to uh, start the, or, or type the start option. Now the start option is going to be equal to a callback function. Now what this is going to do is when the dragging has started, it's going to perform the, opera, uh, the block of code inside of this function. So I'm just going to pull that down a minute as well as pulling down start as well, just so we can see what's going on a lot better. So as well as these options here, I've chosen this start event. Now it's, it's important to know that this, doesn't cl this isn't classed as an option. These here are options and this here is an event. The event has a callback function and inside of the callback function we can specify it's something to do. So what we're going to do is as soon as the dragging starts we're going to uh, apply some text to a div down here and it's going to tell us the status of uh, the element. So has it, being, has it started uh, dragging? Is the element currently being dragged? And when the when the dragging has stopped as well. So we're going to look at these three events. The first of which being start. So we've created this div here, and I'm just going to call it event. And um, when the start when uh, the element has starts to be dragged, so i.e. when it's clicked and the you know first action is made, uh, we want to um, put some text inside this event div. So I'm going to say event.text and inside here, uh, dragging started. So now what's going to happen is when we drag, you can see that the div now says dragging started. Okay, so as soon as we start dragging or we activate this, i.e. we click on it, uh, that's when the dragging has started. So when I, cl when I click and pull a tiny, tiny bit of the way, it says dragging started. The other elements are um, drag and stop. So the first one we're going to look at, or the second one we're going to look at in this case, is, uh, st uh, let's see, where are we? So that ends just there. And then after this, we want to say, um, come down here, and we're going to say drag. And this is equal to a function. We're going to pull this down as well, to just to make it look a bit neater. So while the element is being dragged, we want to again place some text inside this event div. 
and this text is dragging dragging so you'll notice now that when we drag it we won't actually see the dragging started message here and that's because uh, this will override this text in this event div when the dragging started yes we will get a message saying dragging started inside of this div the text inside of this div however as we drag this will replace it so you'll notice that we won't see the uh, dragging started text but we will automatically see the dragging text when I let go uh, this doesn't actually change because we need to supply an additional event this additional event is stop so we create a new callback function inside here and we pull this down and inside here we are going to set the uh, event text to dragging stopped so now that the dragging has stopped well when the dragging has started we have this dragging text here I'm still dragging this element however when I let go and it returns we have dragging stopped so with this you can uh, work out if an element is being dragged or not now this might be useful if you wanted to say pinpoint the coordinates or find out when an element had been dragged if you wanted to log this in one way or another. So these events aren't just here for the sake of telling uh, the user when the dragging has started, when the dragging has, is commencing or when the dragging is or the elements being dragged or when the element has or dragging has stopped. Um, but we obviously have uh, make use of callback functions in order to do something uh, when the dragging has started. So for example, if you wanted to um, you know, allow an element to be dragged and you wanted to say change something on a page as it's being dragged or change something on a page when the, the, when the uh, dragging has stopped, you can use these events here and the callback functions uh, associated with them. So let's just pull that down there. So the three events we have are start, drag, and stop. Now, as well as these, there are other uh, properties of this draggable um, interaction we can use. Uh, if you go over to the jQuery documentation itself, uh, you can view a list of um, options, uh, events, and also different methods associated with this draggable functionality. So in the tutorial, we've looked at a variety of options which either um, help the functionality of draggable um, or the aesthetics behind it. And we've also looked at some of these events and placing text inside of a div uh, when these events actually happen. So draggable is an extremely powerful tool and there's a variety of options you can apply to it uh, depending on your needs.